Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you an interactive magical baker card with the new Essentials by Ellen Baker Lady stamp set. And she's got everything you need to bake something with, and she's got all these little sentiment things you can put on her apron, lots of little things you can decorate her apron with, as well as decorate other things. But I saw all the food, and I <laughs> I'm a sugar holic. I'm just going to fess up to that. And so I'm going to make her have a magical bowl that's going to make magical cakes and pies. So what I did was stamp my little spoons and widgets in a little pile and I'm just drawing basically a rectangle with a curved bottom on it. So it's going to be a clear glass shape because there's no container to hold all of those things, but I wanted them contained. I didn't want them just kind of laying on the counter. I thought it would be easier to color them if they were gathered into a little group, so I masked them out to put them there. And I also put the bowl in her hand and the little icing thing in her hand using masking because those are not part of her stamp. So I'm just going to color her with my Copic markers using, of course, my blue-violet colors to shade. Lots of people don't like that type of shading. You'd rather use brown colors by all means. Use what works for you. This is just what I like because the purples give skin tones a little more of a realistic look to them. If you have studied your science in school, you'll know that, that blood is right underneath the surface of your skin and it's not going to give you the skin color. It's like you see the veins almost through the skin and that's what the purple does. It, it gives it that more natural look. So I'm going to give her dark hair. I don't usually do dark hair, so I thought some dark hair for her would be nice. And when I do dark hair, I start with a middle gray, which was that number six. And I'm going to go in with some light flicks of the 100, which is the black. It is the same, by the way, as the 110, so you don't need both if you ever want to know about that. They are the same marker as far as I can tell. Uh, I've tried lots of tests running them side by side and I cannot figure out the difference. But I'm coloring mostly the black down below and then letting some strips of color, some little light flicks, go across the top of her hair. So soften up a little bit again with that C8 if there's any areas that looked too harsh, just so they kind of blend in a little bit. And then I'll start on her apron. I decided I wanted to use some colors that I could use this card any time for. Didn't have to necessarily use it at Christmas. It would be great for a Christmas card. Um, in doing like pies and cakes and baking things uh, would be great in fall colors but this particular card can be used at any time of year because she's just going to have uh, pinks and greens but this kind of card this specific card with pinks and greens can be used at Christmas because pink and green make great Christmas colors so I thought that would give my card a little more shelf life sitting in my box waiting to be mailed out because I have a, a huge stash that's growing and I really need to do a day or two of sitting down and writing out cards. I do send cards on a regular basis to my patrons. Everybody gets a couple of cards a year, or I, I try. And then I also, as I, I can, I pick random customers who have purchased classes or hex charts or whatever and just randomly send a surprise card in the mail or a surprise pack of goodies, that kind of thing, whatever. I end up sending out. So I have a huge stack of cards that are weighing me down and desperately I need to get around to sending out cards. So I've drawn little flowers on her apron just by using shapes. Just some blobs of pink and blobs of green. And literally you can see I did not sweat over them. I just made blobs and then little flicks of green for the leaves. So you could knock your socks off by trying to draw an intricate pattern, or you can just make a suggestion. Because this card is going to be all about the interaction. And once I get it done, the person's going to be so busy making the cakes and pies pop out of the bowl that they're not going to care about whether or not I've done the detail work on the apron or not. You may be hearing little squeaks outside. My dogs are wrestling out in the backyard at the moment. So now I'm going to get on to coloring some of the other objects in here, putting a little bit of the color through the glass so it looks like some of the light brown will come through the glass. When you're doing glass, you don't often see the full color. You see a, a lighter strength of color come through it. 
and so same with each of the handles. I'll have a little bit more of the color when the spoon is outside of the glass rather than when it's inside the glass. Now for a scene in the background, this needed something to anchor it so that these objects had somewhere to sit. So I'm just gonna make a, a swipe across the page to make a counter or a table that she's standing in front of. Just putting a base of color down there. Throw a little tiny bit in the base of my, my glass jar and then finish off on the right hand side. And again, you can get all kinds of crazy with trying to make it look like a real wood and all that sort of thing. But keep your focus on the main thing on the card. This is about the interaction and no one's gonna care whether or not I give realism to that wooden counter or not. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of shadow to it and, and stuff with that darker color. I, made, I gave it a real anchor with that dark stripe so that the table has an edge. And then I'm just gonna leave a lot of that. So I'm gonna add some of the same colors onto the flowers and things on the bowl so that that ties together with all of the colors that I've already used on the card. And then add a little bit of shading. I probably would have been better had I done my gray shading before I added my flowers, because you can go right over top of that gray with those other colors and it will actually shade them as they move around the bowl. But again, this, the, the bowl is not the main thing, so I'm just trying to give it a little bit of, of depth. Now on a separate piece of cardstock, I've stamped the cakes and pies. I did two of one cake and two of the pies, alternating them, and I made them kind of kitty wampus because who's gonna stack pies and cakes and get them flat? Because that's the way it would roll, I guess, if you had a stack of magical pies and cakes. And I'm gonna do both of the cakes chocolate because that is my favorite. I'll do one dark chocolate and one regular lighter chocolate. And one's gonna have pink frosting, one will have green frosting because that, again, will tie together with all the colors that are on the rest of the card. And I'll use the same brown to, to start off by coloring the chocolate cakes on the end. And E35 is a good, not light brown, not a dark brown. Uh, E37 is a little on the darker side. If you're trying to do kind of a German chocolate cake, that would be too dark. But here I get to just add a little bit of that E35 to each one of the cakes. And then I'll show you how I change the color of both of them so they look like different flavors of chocolate cake. You could also color these so that they had frosting all the way down with dripping frosting. Ooh, you know what? If you're still watching this video and it's Halloween time, you could make them dripping with all sorts of interesting Halloween-y things too. That would be kind of fun. For the crusts on the pies, I'm gonna use an E31, which is a much lighter brown. It's more of a, a color that's gonna work well for pie crust. And I'm gonna go in with an E59, it's a really dark, dark, dark brown. And put some shading underneath of the frosting because it's gonna make the frosting look like it pops. And I'm gonna add a little shading around the left and the right hand side of the cake. And on this one, I'm gonna do the same, but I'm gonna add less of both of them. Not as much. Just a little around each side. Now for this one, I'm gonna take that E37, which I said was a little on the darker brown side, and I'm just gonna color over top of everything. It's gonna blend in that dark brown, so it looks like a nice, rich, dark cake. And this one, now, I'm going to add all the shadow underneath of the frosting, the same way as I did at the top, and a little bit more to the left and right, so I end up with a lighter color, and then go back in with the E35. And there's just a little difference, so they don't look like they're both really rich dark brown cakes. And you can adjust all the colors as much as you want, but just know that you can use different amounts of each color in order to add a little bit of difference to them. So I'm just gonna smooth out a little bit of my pie crust and then add just a slight bit of shading to the pie tins. And you could make them, of course, any, any color pie tins, mine will be Sterling silver pie tins, or aluminum, I guess, pie tins. That's what grandma always had, and grandma was a baker. That's where I claimed to get my sweet tooth from, because grandma always said that you had to have something sweet at the end of a meal. Even if it was just a little bit of jello, a little bite of fruit, a little something, you had to have a cookie, you had to have something at the end of a meal. So thank you, grandma, 
for passing that on and adding to my waistline my entire life. <laughs> oh, but the sweets of life are the fun things. Life would be nothing without treats, right? Well, now I needed to make this into a tab because that's what's going to make this interactive. So I'm gonna add the word pull at the top and draw a horizontal line for myself and fussy cut around my cakes, which you'll see in a, in a moment how that actually worked out. And I'm gonna cut a slit in the card using my fingertip knife, a slit right across it, so that this tab then is going to come out of there and stop when it hits that horizontal bar. So the horizontal is gonna keep it from pulling all the way out. Now there is a little adjustment to this, you kinda of have to wiggle it around a little bit, but once I adhered it all the way down, it's a very flat card. So I put adhesive all the way around the outside edges using some Be Creative tape because that holds things best when you're talking interactive cards. And then I can just pull this out. I, you know, a little, little jiggling needs to happen, but you know, you gotta work for magic. But you can see where it stops because of that horizontal bar. And then I have it tucked in so that it will hide right down in there and be something that someone can pull out the little magical cakes from. Isn't that fun? I like making interactive cards, especially that don't get really thick, and then they don't cost a lot in postage as well. So please go over to my blog and join in the little mini blog hop today to see some more of the new Essentials by Ellen release. You can also check out some classes and other things. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.